Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and today we begin the top 10 best and worst of 2018. So we're going to start off a series of videos reviewing and recapping the best of the best and the worst of the worst of 2018. And it's all been decided by our viewers. I've counted all the votes and we begin our entry with our very first best of the year. And that is number 10, Mr. Miracle. So I'm really glad that Mr. Miracle managed to skirt its way onto the top 10. It did kind of come and go from the top 10. It was a pretty competitive list and lots of different little entries managed to try and make their way onto the top 10 videos. But nevertheless, it's Mr. Miracle that managed to take the 10th spot, and I'm pretty happy about that overall. Tom King and Mitch Gerards proved to be a formidable team of creators in making a series that played up and lived up to the wonderful world of the new gods and Mr. Miracle as a character. This series reminds me a lot of Grant Morrison's work with the character and even Jack Kirby's stuff from him earlier. I said when I made this, my personal favorite of new series in 2017 that Jack Kirby would be proud of this series and I still believe that to be the case now that in 2018 this series has run its course and reached its finale. It was a wonderful series overall, it had a lot of great critical reviews, it won an Eisner Award, that being Tom King's second, and overall I would recommend this series from start to finish. We're not going to be doing a recap of this one, though I probably will be doing little things like that going forward. But this series really just doesn't need another review from me at this point. I did one when we were talking about the best of 2017, and I did two other videos about Mr. Miracle, one for the finale and one recapping the series about halfway through. So at this point I've pretty thoroughly reviewed it. I really like the series, it's a lot of fun, the artwork behind it is remarkable, and the overall story and sentiment behind it is quite interesting. The semi-autobiographical nature of the story, the clear influence of Tom King's time in the CIA and Iraq, are felt in this comic, and it's very interesting to get into the mindset of this man and how he feels about all of this stuff and his life now starting a family and the ongoing nature of that life. There's a lot to ponder in this comic, and it's worth pondering. It's a real piece of artwork easily comparable if not superior to a lot of the independent comics that I saw in 2018, many of which, to be honest, weren't in my personal top 10 on this list. I'll be talking about my feelings throughout these videos relative to what people voted for, but by and large I approve of the way people voted and agree with most of the results on this list. Where I disagree I'll make myself known, but Mr. Miracle 100% was one of my favorite series of the year, and I'm very glad to see it on here as well. Now all that being said, because I've done all these videos on Mr. Miracle, I'm not going to talk about that any further. However, because throughout this series we're going to be talking about stories that I have already reviewed at one point or another, I am going to be looking to make these videos something else, another additional topic of some form or another. And this time we're going to talk about some honorable mentions. Those stories I mentioned that were competitive and nearly managed to take a spot on the top 10, but didn't quite make it. And first up on that list, and only one point behind, is Black Lightning. A wonderful show that a lot of people voted for on this top 10 and just barely got pushed out by a couple other stories. I have to say it's a shame because it's been a good show and it's nice to have something like this show out there. The focus on a strong family dynamic really gives this show a distinct vibe. The fact that Black Lightning as a character is older than most of the other superheroes we see in a typical superhero show makes it a lot of fun and I can see why people voted for it. But like I said, it fell behind by only a point and because of that it took the 11th place spot instead of the 10th. Kudos to that show though because a lot of other shows didn't make this list and didn't even come close to the top 10. So it does stand out relative to a lot of other superhero television shows, but not as much as some of the other ones we'll be talking about later on in this series. Right alongside that, and still only one point behind from Mr. Miracle, is the Venom comic by Cates and Stegman. This series I have also talked about before, as has Joey, and we both really like it. It's a powerful series that has finally given Venom a strong sense of character. When Eddie Brock returned as Venom's host, I was very dubious, and the series that depicted that return really didn't sell me on it whatsoever. However, now that Cates has taken over, this creative team has given us a lot of new energy and stuff to be excited about when it comes to the Venom character. And that change has really been felt throughout this series. It matters, and 
feel significant in reading and following it further. Marvel's been doing really well in presenting these stronger versions of these series that they've been running for years now in a way that has me excited about the comics that I haven't felt about since Secret Wars, and that's pretty damn exciting. So kudos to Venom because that's pretty damn awesome and it just barely was left out of this top 10, and I'm glad that we were able to talk about it at least a little bit here. Following that is My Hero Academia, the only anime entry that really stood any traction in both the best of list and the worst of list. It was a recurring theme, something that people kept talking about and worth noting here. I personally haven't seen it myself, but based on the way you guys are talking about it, and I think I probably should. It sounds interesting, and a lot of people beyond even our viewers, such as critics and other articles I was reading about going over the best and the worst of 2018, were talking about this show. And finally, the last uh, honorable mention I want to mention <laughs> that even came remotely close to being in the top 10 and was in the top 10 at varying points throughout the voting process was The Flash Show. This show is been struggling a little bit, and I think part of the reason it wasn't on the top 10 is owing to the relatively slow nature of the first half of 2018, featuring the downfall of the villain DeVoe and really just dragging out that plotline to oblivion, while the newer season was what people were more talking about. The Elseworlds crossover was a particular highlight of people voting, as was the ongoing nature of the new dynamic. Flash looks great in season 5 with a bright red suit that really reflects the superhero we've come to know and love through the comics, and the stuff going on with Nora Allen has been very new and interesting in and of itself. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the rest because next up is the 10th worst thing of 2018. And it's a real doozy, perhaps not one that's too surprising, but one worth talking about just the same. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.